Hi and welcome to the first session in this series of videos on quantitative finance using Excel Mixer Pro. Today I'm going to give you a brief and um, intuitive introduction on um, the Black-Scholes model, especially in the analysis of the price of European corruption. So the spreadsheet we're looking at right now consists of several inputs that are required to calculate the options price, which are spot interest rate, the volatility of the option, expiry, expressed in years, which actually tells us at which date the option can be exercised, and the strike of the option, which gives us the price at which the, op the underlying can be bought. Um, the output section consists of two, um, two areas. The, the first one is the options price itself, which is this lengthy formula, which you don't have to memorize. You can just download this spreadsheet from convexdna.com, or alternatively, you can find the formula on the internet because it's been around for almost 40 years and we also see in the output section we also see the Greeks or the risk parameters of our option so in order to perform the analysis analysis quickly I'm going to use Excel Mixer Pro so this um, little tool allows you to very quickly generate impressive graphs in Excel so let me show it to you so I'm just selecting the cells which are inputs to the um, to our model and I'm clicking new sliders and I'm selecting the cells that are outputs of our model and I'm clicking new watches so we're going to start our analysis by looking at the graph that shows us the dependency between the spot price and the options price so again spot price is the price of the underlying today whereas um, compared to the strike price, which is the price at which we can purchase the underlying if we own the call option. So right now we're looking at the option with a strike of 101, so very close to the spot. This sort of options is usually referred to as at the money options, so ATM options. And the expiry of our option is in one year. So you see the volatility of our option <coughs> at the moment is very low, so it's um, less than 2%. And the, the profile that we're seeing here is very similar to the payoff profile of the call option. So what it's telling us is that, well, if the underlying price is below, spot, um, below strike price, then the payoff of the option is zero. And if it's above our strike price, then the payoff is spot minus strike. So that's that easy. Now, what will happen if we start adding volatility to our underlying. So actually the fact that the volatility is very low means that there is almost no uncertainty about what will be the price of the underlying in the future. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase this uncertainty. So we're going to say that well we don't know anymore what is going to be the price for sure. So we know that there is some sort of uncertainty about the price. So you see the effect of that on the graph so what actually happens is we start getting some sort of convexity. So we, we, we get curvature. And this curvature is actually one of the main reasons why people trade options. But we're going to talk about it in more details in our second video. So the effect of volatility is that it adds curvature to this spot options price profile. Um, the effect is very similar to moving time to expiry of our option. So if I say that I double the time to expiry of our option, you see it actually also adds convexity. And if we want to be mathematically very precise, then the relationship between the volatility and time to expiry on the options is of the following kind. If I double the volatility, it will have the same effect on this graph as if I multiply time to expiry by 4 or if I take 3 times the volatility it will be the same as taking the time to expiry times 9 so um, let me mm, let me show it to you briefly so I set my time to expiry to half a year and I set my vol to 0 0.4 somewhere here around here so now we'll make a large jump from volatility 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 so I will double my vol 
and just look at the graph what will happen to it so it jumped to this position now I'm going to reduce vol again to 0 0.4 and I'm going to quadruple my time to expiry so taking actually twice times volatility but actually what I'm doing here is I'm taking and making the time to expiry the volatility the change in volatility equal to the square root of change in time to expiry so I'm taking time to expiry and I quadruple it to 2 and it produces for me the same result so uh, this is a very very important uh, relationship in Black Scholes model so the, the the term volatility times square root of time remains constant in the model okay so if we increase vol by 3 it has the same effect as increasing time to expiry by 9 okay so I hope we understood that let's let's reduce our vol a little bit and let me do the following so let me try to see what what is the effect on convexity so what is the effect on that graph if we reduce strike to some very low number like 10 so meaning we're going to look at the option that is very deep in the money and as you can see so this graph now has almost no convexity which also makes sense because although we have volatility so like 25 percent the strike of the option compared to the current underlying price is so low meaning that we will almost definitely make money with our option so we will definitely exercise it and buy underlying at 12 and sell it at the market price so that they, there is almost no convexity so the convexity is highest at around the current spot level so as we said this is called at the money yeah at the money level and this convexity is measured by the second derivative of that graph with respect to spot price I'm going to show it very briefly we're not going to go very deep into second order Greeks today but just to give you an idea so this is this is gamma so gamma is telling us how how much convexity is actually at each point for our option and we see that they, we have highest gamma at around the current um, current spot price actually it is the discounted current uh, current spot price so we also need to take into account interest rates okay so we have seen the effect of volatility and time to expiry on that graph we have also seen how strike um, changes the the shape of convexity um, of that graph and the last one that's left is actually the interest rate so what is the effect of interest rate so if we increase the interest rates they well there is some change but you see it's it's relatively relatively small compared to other inputs that is why interest rates is important for options pricing um, but they are not extremely important so usually option traders care more about volatility than they do care about interest rates so let me put interest rates to some level that's more re realistic for the day somewhere around three percent and let's have a look at the next graph which is the options delta so options delta is is a very actually very simple concept so what we're plotting on that graph is just the derivative the first derivative of that graph with respect to spot yeah so actually that's that easy again let's start by our first example as, as we also did with, um, with this with the previous graph we set vol to a very low number then you see these points are almost connected by a straight line meaning that well the the, the the change in options price in case spot is above strike the changes on options price is going to be one to one so if underlying goes up by one the um, the option will also go up by one otherwise there is absolutely no sensitivity of option options price um, with respect to the spot price because we don't have volatility so of course this is very unrealistic so we almost don't have any underlings that have no volatility and have any traded options so it makes more sense to look at delta levels where we actually do have volatility um, here 
uh, important remark is that as I said so we're looking at an option that, that is very close to the current spot price so this strike is very close to the current spot price so the add the money option and these options uh, usually have delta which is very close to 50 percent so to 0 0.5 on that um, axis um, usually because um, well I said usually because it's it's not always true sometimes this value is higher or lower and that actually depends on the level of interest rates and to analyze it let me produce another graph which will show us a 3d graph which will show us the dependency of spot um, of the option price on spot and interest rates so I select both of them I select the precision I increase it a little bit and here we have here we have our graph so this graph displays the sensitivity of delta um, with respect to spot and interest rate so you see the general shape is always the same it's actually the shape we're seeing here so what actually happens if we if the rates are very low so I just move the rates very low so if we look at the level at the delta level where our current strike is and we said it's equal to the current spot at the moment so it's 50% exactly spot on but now let me move the interest rates so I'll be moving interest rates by just clicking here and going up with that with the mouse so you see what happens the the point here goes up so again we start from from zero interest rates we start increasing interest rates and the delta starts increasing as well for the same strike so um, meaning that we can't generalize and say that the add the money option always has a delta of 50 so it depends what is the current interest rate so this was um, a very brief introduction to a couple of interesting um, facts about the Black Shoals model and I hope to see you um, for our next session which will discover uh, which will discuss in more depth the uh, second order derivatives and um, we will also touch on uh, gamma vega and see how this parameters actually affect the options price and um, how they how, how sensitive they are to the underlying inputs of the model